Greetings folks, it's a new year, 2019. I thought it was about time I went back and revisited some past planes again. This will be number 13. Now in uh, past planes 12, the last plane I looked at was the, let me put my glasses up, Sky Hunter, the full size Sky Hunter 1800. So now we're up to about, uh, where are we? We're about halfway through 2017. I've got a bit of catching up to do. So the next model that I got was the Sonic model AR wing. Uh, I have actually already done an episode purely on, on wings. Uh, I'll tell you which one it is down here. I can't remember off the top of my head, but I'll just go through these briefly again uh, because this wing is probably my favorite wing of all time. I'm still flying it often. Just flew it yesterday, actually. The AR Sonic model AR wing, a perennial favorite. Uh, and I like it a lot better than the S800 as well. So the next plane I had was the XUAV Mini Talon. That's sort of the, the mid-size Talon. You can get the full-size Talon, 1.7 metre, I think. The Mini Talon, what's that, about a metre? 1.1 or something like that. So what did I think of the Mini Talon? Well, it's a plane that's definitely designed for a purpose, and that is a sort of long, medium-range FPV. Uh, it's an ugly plane, to be honest. Great big snout out the front, motor at the back, it means it's very, very short coupled, uh, so you sort of have to set it up properly for it to fly nicely. You could stack it up with batteries for long flights, which meant that you had to fly it reasonably fast. And when it was set up well, it actually flew very, very nicely, very smooth, fast, and reasonably quiet too with the setup that I had. What did I have? I had a 1100kV motor from uh, Carbon Bird with a nice big prop on it and it just purred, cr cruised around on 4S or 3S, uh, very nice to fly, very efficient. Uh, it's an odd airfoil, sort of short and deep, and the centre of gravity has to be a long way further forward than most wings. Most wings are 30, 35%, I find. Uh, this is more towards the 20, 25% back from the leading edge for the centre of gravity. Uh, and, yeah, that takes a bit of working out. On the... RC groups, forums, uh, people have worked out that uh, a good centre of gravity is 55 millimetres back from the leading edge. I was actually flying around with 75 back from the leading edge, but mine was minimum weight uh, and I wasn't doing any long range FPV or anything like that. And that's part of the problem. I'm not really into long range FPV, so uh, this plane that was specifically built for that purpose, or specifically designed for that purpose, didn't really have a space in my hangar. So, that one's moved on, uh, I don't have it anymore. Next up we have the XUAV Sky Surfer X8, uh, which is a Bixler One style uh, pusher motor glider, a beautiful plane. It was a delight to fly, like all of these similarly designed uh, pusher motor gliders. I found it to be a, a, a great slope soarer. Uh, it glides beautifully, you could even thermal a little bit with it on a good day perfect beginner's plane. It had some unique features. XUAV often have uh, a wing clamp system where you plug the wings in and do up a, a bolt to clamp them in, which is a really nice design. That works very well. It runs on the very common and cheap 2200 3S, so it's just a, a perfect sort of beginner's plane, intermediate plane, FPV plane. Just one of those beautiful, easy to fly, delightful planes. I have now passed that plane on to a friend of mine, uh, and he's having a lot of fun flying FPV with it for the first time, so uh, it's a great plane for that. Next up is the Nano Talon from ZOHD. Uh, another really unique design, uh, just with the pop-in fins and wings, and the aileron or the control surface connections are square rods that slot into square holes for control. It's an odd-shaped little beast, like the uh, Mini Talon. V-tail, chubby wings and a big nose at the front, motor on the back. This also comes with a stabiliser built in and it, I really like the stabiliser that it comes with. Initially it had uh, dihedral on the wings, uh, which I thought made it a little bit Dutch rolly, a bit sort of rock and roll, uh, especially flying in wind, always flying in wind here. So uh, I followed uh, Bonafide Pirate's idea and flattened out the wings so there's no dihedral now. Uh, I did a video on that as well. Uh, I think it flies beautifully now. I really like it. It's a super efficient 
little FPV plane, room for an FPV camera in there. Plenty of space in here for batteries. I think I'm running it on the 1300 3S and you can get like 20, 30 minute flight times out of it just cruising around. Wonderful little plane. EPP, so it's sort of flexy and, and tough. Has hatches underneath where we've got, uh, oh, I've got an X6R in there. I don't really need that. Aileron servo in the middle there and stabiliser up in the top there. A lot of people have fitted it with, uh, you know, full-on INAV autopilot and things like that. I don't think, uh, I wouldn't do it on this sort of plane. I'd, I'd save that for a larger plane, I think. Flying in small areas, sort of football oval size field, flies around beautifully. Even sort of medium range cruising for FPV. A fun little plane and unique design. Again, it's very short coupled, which means the motor or the, 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 the wing and the control surface is a you know, very short distance there, motor down the back, so it's being pushed along. So it means that it is quite wiggly on FPV. It's not a smooth flying experience, it's just fun, basically. And now we come to one of my all-time favourite planes. This is the Volantex Ranger 1600. I bought this plane myself uh, because I was looking for a sort of a bigger, beefed-up version of the Bixler II, another of my favourite planes. And uh, when it arrived, I, um, I was absolutely delighted with it. It is, it is exactly that, a beefed-up Bixler II, I find. Very similar flight characteristics. can be quite aerobatic, uh, fast, slow, very efficient, uh, good glider. It's just got all the uh, characteristics that I really like. Tough enough on the slope. It's got this sort of you know, blown plastic fuselage. New plug-in wing system, so you can pull the wings off if you if you need to. Uh, I never do. Tried a few different motors for it. This was the kit version. Uh, at the moment, I've got a 2836 uh, 1200 uh, prop drive V2, running it on 4S. Run a 3000 4S battery for very nice long flight times, and plenty of power as well on 4S. You can uh, you know apply the grunt to get out of problems or fly fast. Uh, cruise around slowly, just sipping power. An almost perfect plane in my book. I love the fact that the servos are down the back there. That means you don't get any flex in the long uh, push rods going down the tail. Easy access to uh, work on them. Spot for a, an FPV transmitter there, I guess, although I never use that. Uh, I always tend to just pop it up on the nose there because uh, I tend to be swapping and changing FPV cameras and transmitters all the time. With all these Volantix planes, they have uh, quite sturdy wings. They have a metal tube buried in the foam. It's joined with a, another metal tube. It has edge-on plywood spars there as well for extra stiffness. Nice sort of thick, sturdy airfoil. I find I can just throw this plane around as much as I want, slow it right down as well, glide it, slope it, FPV it, it does everything for me. One of my favourites. Okay, so that'll do for the moment. Uh, that brings us up to the start of 2018. A very productive year for me for reviewing planes and making planes. There are lots and lots more than any other year so far. Uh, so I'd better keep going with these past planes episodes and uh, that'll do for now. Thanks for watching.